Okay guys, so I want to jump into why I've been doing this whole continuous glucose monitor and explain my story a little bit better. And I think the best way is just to show you what happened on my most recent blood work. Okay guys, here it is. So down below are my blood work results from uh, late last year. So in November, first time I've ever had high readings and I had high LDLs at 137, which are out of range. Uh, not supposed to be above 100. And then hemoglobin A1C, this is the most concerning to me because there's so many people that are metabolically unhealthy in the United States. It's almost assumed to be at about 90%. And I came in at 5.7 on my A1C. That's not good. That is pre-diabetic. It's the lowest number in the pre-diabetic range, but it is pre-diabetic nonetheless. Okay, guys, so those results really bothered me. And I think the main reason is, I'll give you some context. I am 5'10". 155 pounds. I work out four times a week. I'm a doctor of chiropractic, so I try and emulate a little bit of a picture of health for my patients to see what I expect of them. How can I preach about health and wellness if I'm on a thousand medications, if I'm overweight, if I am diabetic? So it was shocking to say the least. I know that this includes the past three months of what I was eating. So that includes Halloween and Thanksgiving a lot of the <laughs> typical times of year where you eat a little bit worse, but still regardless, that is not an excuse. And these are the lab results that you would need to be one of the 7% of Americans with good metabolic health. And where I failed is that one right there, the A1C, 5.4 or below, I was a 5.7. My fasting glucose was also, I think a 92, let's say one under 90. And my LDLs, this is doing the LDL uh, small dense particles. My LDL uh, regular was above the normal range. So three things out of range, I'm not happy about it. And they needed to change. And that's what this was all about. So when I put on the continuous glucose monitor, I was gonna do a couple experiments. I needed to figure out for myself what was going on. Now, continuous glucose monitors are great because it's very personalized medicine. You might eat a grape and be perfectly fine. I might eat a grape and I might spike through the roof with my blood sugar. Everyone's got a certain amount of bioindividuality. We do know glycemic indexes and those are good general rules to work by, but there are certain things that will spike somebody very aggressively and maybe not another person. So I was gonna eat my normal diet for the first five days. These continuous glucose monitors are about 15 day uh, use. So I did the first five days, normal, regular diet. The second five days were gonna be specifically my cleanse, which was just fruits, vegetables, and water. Organic fruits, vegetables, and water. I was very limited. And then the last five days, I was going to eat some junk. I was going to really eat some garbage foods that I know are bad for you to see how they affected my blood sugar. So I used the Stello from Dexcom. It's a 15-day non-prescription. It was $99 for two 15-day sensors. And the first 15 days were the ones that I was really experimenting with. I did a normal diet at first just to see what I normally eat and how it affects it. And I wasn't terrible. I did tend to spike any time I ate rice, pasta. This was before I learned some tricks, which I'm also about to share with you. As far as ease of use, it was incredibly easy. We got this uh, sensor on very, very quickly, completely painless, which I was actually surprised about. A little bit sore the next couple days after putting it on, but I did not feel it going on the first day, which was remarkable to me because you could see the needle. Um, it was very impressive. The first 24 hours, you kind of bounce around, which is said to be normal. After that, it really locks in on a range and it will show you a much more accurate reading of what your blood sugar looks like. And for me, I typically would go to about 80 to 75 range in the middle of the night. I would have a dawn effect, which is a typical spiking when you first wake up. It doesn't go up a crazy amount, maybe goes from the 75 to 100 range. Then you eat. And when you eat, this is where things get interesting. I try and do a lot of Mediterranean diet. So I would usually start with Greek yogurt and some fruit in the morning. I thought that was a great breakfast turns out that is not great because you're starting with a sugar not ideal and i'll explain what i ended up doing and finding out is that we should always eat in order and that order is critically important we want to start with vegetables your fiber component after the vegetables you always want to go to the fat or a protein those fat and proteins help 
kind of decrease the amount of spike that you get from the next thing that you should be eating, which is the carbohydrate on the plate. After the carbohydrate is the sugar. So like a dessert or something like that. In my scenario, I was essentially eating Greek yogurt, which was a protein fat mixed with sugar, the fruits. And I would get pretty drastic uh, spikes from this, which is surprising where if I ate the yogurt first and then I ate the fruit, did not have a dramatic spike. It was pretty incredible. Now it was remarkable to see how much our culinary world knows about this more than us, the average person, because it's interesting that in restaurants, you will always start with a side salad. That's typically an appetizer. After that comes the main meal, which is usually a, a fat or a protein. Then you'll also have a carbohydrate on the side. And last is the dessert. So there's a reason. They started with the vegetables. Then they went to the main course of fat and protein. It'll also have a side of a carbohydrate, maybe a pasta or something. And then last is always the dessert. They do it in order for a reason. It's our way our body can deal with these glucose spikes most efficiently and best for our health. Another incredible tip was drinking a vinegar martini is what a uh, glucose goddess actually calls it is any type of vinegar, except for like a balsamic glaze or something like that, one of the more sugary ones, but normal white vinegar, red wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar, mixing about a tablespoon of vinegar with about, you know, eight ounces of water, a glass of water, mixing that together and drinking that before a uh, carbohydrate rich or sugary meal dramatically decreases the spike as well. And this is because the acetic acid stops the breakdown of the carbohydrate into sugar and is much, much better for our spikes and controlling these metabolic issues with high spikes from, let's say, eating a dessert or a big slice of bread, something like that. The biggest surprises to me with my individual breakdown of foods were really, really specific. There were three that really stick out to me. Number one was just a simple pretzel. Uh, me eating a one of my kids, uh, the thicker rod pretzels, it was an Utz pretzel. That pretzel really spiked me. I ended up going to about 190 off of this pretzel. I had maybe two sticks, nothing else. It was on an empty stomach. That was another mistake, but really, really spiked me. And I was shocked. Uh, I don't know if everyone responds that way, but that was pretty incredible to me. I always thought of those as the more boring snack. And I thought I was picking a healthier option. And it turns out that was really messing with my, my blood sugar. Another two, and these two are fruits, but these two fruits really sent me through the roof. One was grapes. Me and my body don't like grapes, apparently, because my, with grapes and also bananas, I absolutely love bananas. Bananas are one of my favorite. Oh, I'm going to go work out. Let me just grab a banana real quick and get a, uh, get some sugar and a carbohydrate into my body before a good workout. I would spike above 200 every time I ate a banana. With the grapes, I think I was at 190, but we're talking 210, 220, according to the CGM, every time I had a banana. So bananas are gonna get cut out. I love bananas, but they're gone. See you later. No more banana for me. This is why I think it's so important for everyone to have the continuous glucose monitor so they can see what they specifically respond to and they can change this, they can cut things out. It's not everything has to be changed for the better, but making certain things that can help you individually, I think is just so drastically important for our overall all health and just the future of medicine. It's really incredible. All right, so now let's talk about the five days of the cleanse. Now, this was the thing that I found most remarkable during my thing. And it was that I was eating essentially organic fruits, organic vegetables. I was allowed some legumes, so some beans and water. There was nothing else. There was no coffee. There was no dairy. There was no nuts, no meat at all, no fish. And I thought this was going to be very incredibly healthy, but it turns out without the fat and the protein, I was still having pretty drastic spikes from just any time I ate a fruit. If I ate vegetables all day long, I was fine. But if I, the second I ate a fruit, I would spike through the roof. And a matter of fact, my resting ended up being significantly higher while I was on this cleanse, I'm not sure why my resting actually raised from a normal range of, let's say 100 to, I went to about like 120 as a resting while I was on the cleanse. 
Now, they don't claim the cleanse to be good for blood sugar. The big thing is obviously lowering uh, your lipid panels, obviously bringing down your LDLs. You're not eating saturated fats. You're not eating uh, meat uh, fat, all this stuff that can raise your LDLs, your cholesterol and whatnot. It's also supposed to be very good for blood pressure and also very good for your GI tract because you're eating a bunch of fiber with the fruits and vegetables. They don't claim it to be amazing for blood sugar and... I could see why, because it definitely, it skewed me a little bit. I actually went a higher normal day resting blood glucose level, and then I would have a, occasional spikes left and right whenever I had some fruit. So it was definitely, that was, that was interesting. It was eye-opening. I'm happy I did it, because that definitely taught me a little something. Now, in comparison, when I went on to eating more junky foods, the ones that I thought were gonna be bad for me, they were bad, they were not great. So I had a dessert pastry that I actually posted. I actually only went to about 165 with that. It was a glucose spike, but I was expecting significantly higher and I only got to about 165, 170. A bagel, I know bagels, If you're, I'm from New Jersey, so these are big old thick bagels. So I had a bagel, egg and cheese with ketchup. Ketchup also has sugar. And I wanted to see how that would affect me. That bagel, egg, and cheese sent me to 190 for a sustained amount of time. That was the biggest thing. It was it was two and a half hours. It wasn't the normal hour spike and crash. I was up there for a while. You don't really want to be at that level for that consistent of a time period. Same thing with pizza. Pizza gave me a double spike. Um, pretty normal for something that's got high carbs, but also high fat from the cheese and the oils. So I'd spike to, I don't know, about 190 to 200. I would drop back down to 160, and then I'd shoot back up to 185, and that would be over a three-hour span. So that's not great, but it was kind of expected, and I'm happy I did it so I can now see how those things really do impact my body. So the big question is, do I recommend everyone try a CGM or continuous glucose monitor? And the answer is absolutely. Now, I'm not sponsored in any way by either of these brands. I specifically use a Dexcom Stello. There's also the Abbott Lingo. They are both available over the counter without prescription. This is huge. The FDA was kind of holding them back for a little bit. Um, they finally allowed them out to the public. You do have to pay for them. Like I said, for mine, the Dexcom Stello was two different sensors. Each one lasts 15 days, so it's a month supply for $99. And it's so important for individualized medicine and learning what foods affect you versus somebody else. We don't all follow a textbook. We, there's no cookie cutter approach to health and nutrition. We're all different. So it's just so incredible that we now have this weapon that we can use to learn a little bit more about ourselves and what causes spikes to us, what foods work well with us. I, I, I'm just blown away by it. I hope you guys were blown away too. If you have any questions, feel free to drop anything in the comments. I'll try and answer whatever I can, but I hope you guys have an amazing one and I will see you next time.